Test-driven development. What is it really? Why is it important? Why does it matter? And how should we undertake it? There's probably one more question. When should we test? The answer to that one's easy. All the time. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't already, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the video, hit like too, so that we can keep you informed of future episodes. In this episode, I want to explore the reasons why I think you should be practicing test-driven development. Test-driven development is about driving development from test. It's not really about testing as much as a general approach to software development. We organise nearly all of our activities around the need to verify what it is that we create and so test it. It encourages us to take a more iterative approach to design and development as a result and so work in smaller, safer, better understood steps. We work more incrementally on our design. We create measurably higher quality I think that you can practice continuous delivery in the absence of test-driven development. But if you do, I am convinced that you will do a worse job. So in this episode, let's explore the what, why and how of test-driven development. In 2014, a study of nearly 200 production failures um, in software systems of all different kinds, researchers found that most problems were caused by simple programming mistakes. The kinds of mistakes that programmers make in every software system, in every language, whatever your, your tools or your approach to software development, we software developers make the same kinds of mistakes over and over again. Off by one errors, uh, conditionals the wrong way round in, in conditional statements, scoping problems with variables, all of these things, if you've done any program at all, I am sure that these ideas will be familiar to you. And these are the, at the root of the vast majority of production failures. To quote the report that they produced, they found 58% of these, uh, these uh, mistakes are trivial and can be exposed by statement coverage testing. If we simply checked that our code did what we thought it did, we'd eliminate nearly 60% of production defects. That's a huge step forward. Actually, if you take this idea really seriously and start applying uh, test room development in its broadest sense, in the continuous delivery sense that I tend to talk about, the data, the empirical data is even stronger than that. Paddy Power reported that when they made the switch from more traditional development approach to applying the techniques of continuous delivery, they saw a greater than 90% drop in the number of defects in production. This kind of value is hard to ignore. So what is it about test-driven development that can deliver this impact? Code is weird, unusual stuff. It's complex, expressive and fragile. There's not much in human experience that's really like that. One thing that comes close is, strangely enough, accounting. It's not as complex as software, but it shares that unusual fragility that we see in software. In both cases, one tiny error can invalidate the result. It's rather like if when you wrote a book, a single spelling mistake made the book unreadable. Adding up lots of numbers is error prone. And so humans make mistakes all of the time. Accountants found a solution to this problem. Depending on what sources you look at, it dates back to either the Romans or Genoa in 1340. They invented double entry bookkeeping. Uh, in double entry accounting system, at least two accounting entries are required to record each financial transaction. That's the description of double entry bookkeeping. This is an error detection protocol invented all of those hundreds of years ago to help accountants spot when they made mistakes. What they do is that accountants record each transaction twice from different perspectives, and if the results don't match, then there's a mistake somewhere, and they go in search of the mistake. In code, we have the same problem. All of us developers make mistakes in our code all of the time. 
Our tools catch some kinds of mistakes. Little red squiggly lines in our IDEs are great feedback, fast and efficient. But there are some kinds of problems that they won't catch. It only takes us so far. What would give us an independent path verification that our coding actions matched our intent? Test-driven development. TDD allows us to express our intent in the form of a test. A mini specification for the behaviour that we intend in our code. We can check that mini specification by executing it before we've written the behaviour and checking that it fails. And seeing if it fails, we know now that, uh, that our test is actually testing something useful. Next, we're going to write some code to fulfill that intent. Just enough code to get back to a stable passing state with our failing specification of the behaviour. The bare minimum to meet that mini specification. We run our specification, our test, again to confirm that it passes now. Now we're in a stable state. All of our specifications, tests, are passing. So now we can do some more creative work. We can take more chances because we've got the defense of these passing specifications or tests. To make our test and our code more expressive, we can start changing it and modifying it. More general, more readable, simpler. The test describes the de this desirable behavior of our code one way. The code describes it another. Here is our independent path verification. Here is our version of double entry bookkeeping. A good way to capture all of that little flow is uh, often, uh, often used to describe test driven development. It's the, the mantra red green refactor. Red, we're going to write a test and see it fail, run it. Uh, and that's the red condition. Green, we're going to make the code pass with the minimum change. Refactor, we're going to tidy them up and make them beautiful and elegant. Uh, and that's the last stage in the process. This is a good way to think about test driven development and a good discipline to adopt in its practice. This is a very different and much more powerful practice than simple unit testing. Unit testing is, as the name suggests, all about testing. Test driven development as the name doesn't suggest, is all about design. As a side effect, uh, it creates better tests than unit testing. So what does the phrase TDD is all about design really mean? Let's think about design and why we care about it for a moment. What would we consider to be quality in code? I think the first and obvious thing that we would be looking for is that it works. It does something that, we, that, 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 we, that is helpful in some way. As programmers that need to work in the code, we'd also like it to be easy to read, testable so that we can check that it does indeed work, easy to maintain, easy to change in the future. Simple, as simple and efficient as possible. Um, we'd like all of those things. What sorts of technical properties of code deliver those values? And I think there's a short, a relatively short list. Good code, in the sense that we've described, is modular. It's broken up into smaller pieces that are each easier to understand and deal with. It's loosely coupled. Those pieces are not tightly bound together and have a little bit of freedom to change independently of one another. It has high cohesion. The bits of behavior that are closely related to one another are physically close together in the code. Good code has good separation of concerns. Each piece, each cohesive unit of the code is, is, is focused on trying to achieve one task, one outcome. When we blur together too many different responsibilities in code, that is inherently poorer code than if we don't do that. Good code exhibits information hiding. It allows us to deal with another part of the code without worrying too much about the detail of what's going on behind those, those divisions. If we follow test-driven development as a discipline, we don't write a line of code until we have a failing test that demands that line of code from us. Now, if you're always gonna start with a test, you'd have to be rather dumb to make your life harder 
uh, by writing nasty, complicated tests. We're smart people. We're going to make our lives easier. That's part of the, the benefit of computers. Uh, we can use them as tools to make things easy for us. So we're going to try and find a way to write tests that are easy. To, they're going to capture our ideas simply. Uh, so we're going to try and keep the tests simple. They should be easy to write. In order to be able to achieve that, what you are doing is you're trying to create testable code. That's going to make the, the, the test easier to, to create. Testable code looks different to code that wasn't written with it in mind. Here's a really simple example. Let's imagine for a moment that we have a car. Here's a, here's a, here's a simple class, a car, and this car has a, a, an engine, a petrol engine inside. We've got a start method on our car which is going to put, put the car into neutral, it's going to apply the brakes to make sure that we don't roll away, and then it's going to call start on the engine. Let's imagine that we wanted to try and write a test for that. We could create our car, we could tell the car to start, and how do we tell whether the engine started? Well, we can't. We, we, we can't do that because we don't really have access to the engine. The engine's just a component of the car hidden away somewhere. We could change our design to, to try and make it more testable. So here's a better car, and this better car has a fake engine, which we're going to inject into it. We're going to start the car again, and then we're going to make an assertion that the, um, that the engine started successfully. That's our fake engine, remember. Our, our better car looks a bit like this. We can inject an engine into the car and it just holds onto that reference. Notice how decoupled the car has immediately become with respect to the engine. It doesn't know anything about the engine. So us supplying a fake engine um, has, uh, is perfectly reasonable. Now, here's a simple picture of the fake engine. Uh, it's just going to do start, and it's just going to maintain the state of this. In reality, we probably wouldn't create a class like this. We'd use a mocking library or something like this in test room development. But I just wanted to demonstrate the principle. We're just going to record the fact that the engine was started. That gives us the ability to immediately to test the code. This is testable code. Think now what that means for the design. My better car works fine with a petrol engine. We've tested it with a fake engine, but if we injected a, a petrol engine, as long as it fulfilled the contract of being able to start, being startable, it's going to work. But equally, I could have all of the same car, except I could change the engine. I could have an electric engine instead. Or if I was slightly crazy, I could create a car with a jet engine. All of those things are equally open to me with my better car. The code that I created is more flexible, and it's more flexible as a result of working to try and make it more testable. Test-driven development is not a silver bullet. It's not going to automatically turn you into the world's greatest programmer. My observation, though, is that it is something of a talent amplifier. It's not going to make a bad programmer great, but it will make a bad programmer better, and it will make a great programmer greater. And so, whatever your level of skill or experience, test-driven development will allow you, will help you, to do a better job, in my opinion. Test-driven development doesn't stop at the commit stage unit tests. I consider automated testing to be one of the foundational cornerstones of the continuous delivery approach. Continuous delivery makes little sense to me without the idea of continuous automated testing at its heart. So, where do you begin? As I said, test-driven development is not just about unit testing. And I have several other episodes on the channel that describe other aspects of test-driven development, acceptance testing, BDD, executable specifications, as well as the more fine-grained detail of test-driven development style unit testing. But the starting point is really that low-level, fine-grained exercise of test-driven development. To get started with this, I recommend that you look at something called coding carters. Coding carters are simple programming exercises that allow you to kind of rehearse, uh, practice uh, your, your discipline. Pick a coding carter, something really simple, something like FizzBuzz or, some, or, or adding fractions 
just pick a really simple little exercise and perform that exercise repeatedly over a period of weeks. My recommendation is that you allocate half an hour every day for at least two weeks and spend half an hour every day performing one of these coding carters that you like. Use test-driven development and really stick to the rules. Don't write a line of code that isn't demanded of you by a test. So always start from the test. At the point at which you write your test, make the test force you to create the classes that you need. Make it force you to create the methods you need and so on and so on. Follow that discipline. If you follow my advice and do this for half an hour every day, just on these simple exercises, that will start to demonstrate to you some of the power and the, the, in this technique. The problem with coding carters is that they are not as complex as real code, but the advantage of coding carters is they're not as complex as real code, so you can really practice the, the, the exercises. It's a bit like playing scales if you're a musician. So I do recommend that as an approach to you. Uh, if you want to find a good source for coding carters, there's a lovely website called Cyber Dojo, uh, which uh, provides you with all, everything that you need to practice test-driven development uh, in a variety of different languages and gives you a whole raft of coding carters to choose from as little exercises that you can perform. I think that test-driven development is one of the few practices in our discipline that really functions as genuine engineering by which I mean a reliable, repeatable technique that makes the code that we create better. I can't think of anything else other than saying be smarter, which is not very helpful, that really works. Thank you very much for watching.